All right, wait for all this to get set up. All right, are we going yet? Looks like we're looks like we're going. Let me update my All right. Make sure everything's all set, then I'll get into the leagues here. Gonna play some mono red today. Nope, we gotta fix the stream decker. Once the stream decker's fixed, we'll get into some leagues with some mono red. Which I'm excited to play this. I'm excited to play something a little different than what I've been doing in standard. So give something else a try. Get off this kind of mid-range slugfest and look to play some aggressive games of magic. So this is Shanta Yasaoka's list. I just cut two on crop crashes and added just four Rampaging Ferocidons in the main deck just due to a recommendation of a friend. So, so yeah, we're going to give this a play here. Uh, competitive standard league. Just make sure we're going here. It's my last standard league. I don't know when this was. Mono red. All right. All right, so we're on the play. This seems like a keep to me. Probably go Kenra in the Crasher. Maybe if we draw another land, we can go like Mentor and something, but I think this hand's fine. Which we don't have a turn one play, and we're on the draw, so I don't know how good that is, but give this a whirl. Oh. I think I think of my best draw is like Bomat Courier off the top. Oh, we drew another Ferocid on. Right, I guess we'll wait here. Then I'll play probably the Sun Scorched Desert into this Kenra. Okay, so we're playing against an energy deck. The big bad energy. All right, servant, that's bad. I guess I probably should have actually waited to hold that for next turn so that if my opponent taps out for a Chandra, 
I guess I still can't kill it. Well, I guess I actually could. So we'll target the servant, and then we'll crash in for two. Hopefully we're playing against a non-teamer energy build. All right, Bristling Hydra is a problem. So I think I'm just going to go, I'm going to play a three drop this turn. So I can go on Crop Crasher, but I don't really want to do anything to this until I have the Harsh Mentor in play. So I could just play a Ferocidon and then pass. And then next turn maybe go Mentor, Kari Zev, and then crash or something. Give me one second. Hello? Hey, what's up? No Sorry about that. That was my wife. She gave me a call. You gotta answer those. So Okay, so this is a tough turn. I don't really know what to do here. I think I wanna play a Ferocidon to just continue to chip damage in. And then the problem is, is if I play, if I play Ferocidon, then me playing creatures is gonna be painful. But I probably can win that race. How's it going, Grant? Ugh, I just don't know what to do. I can't just play the Mentor to make it more difficult for him. Oh, he's playing Teamer Pummeler, the Heshep Oasis, or the Sultai Pummeler. So how do I... I probably play the Mentor out. I probably should save that until he plays the Pummeler, because it's going to make it so he's got to deal two damage no matter what. So I guess I'm going to play this Ferocidon, because he's going to... No matter, like, what the Mentor is going to be good, and it means next turn I can either play two lands, two two-drops... Attack with this. I would probably play this Harsh Mentor before attacking with a Ferocidon, if that's what we're going to do. Alright. Alright, my opponent doesn't do anything. So now I probably just lightning strike this and see what my opponent does. Because then I can get in with this. Ferocidon. So let's see, because I'm I'd be willing to bet that we're gonna see a, a like a blossoming defense right here. So I think I'd like to get that out before I interact in combat. Okay. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Okay, so this is countered. And now do I play Mentor or do I play Kari Zev? Probably Kari Zev, because then I on crop crash of this, and this Bristling Hydra doesn't really have a good block next turn. I mean, it kind of does, but it just gets us to start forcing through some damage. Take a point from this. And then we probably on crop crasher exert on this. Hope we don't see another blossoming defense. But if my opponent holds back, maybe I'll change something up there. How are you doing today, Mike? What do you got going on this Sunday? I guess I should move this over a little bit.
computer screen's not very light. You just trying to keep cartouching this thing up. Hopefully nothing. The Cowboys playing today? Okay. Playing right now? So I think I know we crash on this. Hit for three, six. So I mean, that's a pretty good term. We need to do two things. So I guess we go like this. I hear Des Bryant has seriously deteriorated his play recently. So like we're going to... Hopefully my opponent doesn't have another dive down or a way to um, get some more or a way to give this thing hexproof. Hopefully we get through this attack. I have a hard time believing my opponent would have attacked with this Hydra and them not have a way to deal with this or a way to keep this to prevent like this from happening. No play Soul Scar Mage after combat. Well, that resolved. Wow. Okay. I mean, there's a very real chance we die next turn. Like he pumps this up a little bit. Because we go to 10. My opponent would probably have to block with his Soul Scar Mage. Actually, are we, we're just dead on... Are we dead on board doing this? So this gives this plus 3. 1, 2... One, two, three. He's got to use an energy. So that's nine, ten. If we play a creature. Yeah, so I guess I can't even play a creature. Because we're dead on board. If we go to... But we're dead on board now. Oh, man, I messed this all up. Alright, I think I messed... I messed my play up here, but we're going to hope our opponent doesn't see this. Larger than life, okay. Yep, they got it. They got a big old Hydra. Dude, it is nice to be a New England fan. They don't do stupid things like that. That was bad there. I don't think... My draw was weird where I don't think I was like beating this thing all suited up. But I definitely think I could have played that a little bit better. I don't have any idea how to sideboard in this matchup. I would assume that like some of my removal comes in. Probably the Sand Strangler to hit his little guys. Um, these probably aren't good because of the Falter effects. I'm going to assume that these probably aren't that great. I could see like these coming in just as a way to like it's just a removal, more removal. Maybe we want to be able to interact in the air a little bit. No, it'd be one hell of a draft deck. Though the Frostodons may be fine on the play. I, I actually I don't really know. I mean, the, these shocks aren't killing very much. Kind of just want to stay really aggressive on the draw. I don't want these. And I don't think I want these. Well, on the play, let's just like be aggressive. And then maybe board in some glory bringers on the draw, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but this is what we're gonna go with. Thought this was a limited deck. What a what a smart Alec. What a smart ass. All 
I would like to play first. A lot of removal, which I guess is alright this matchup. The Kari Zev should do some work too. So I guess I have a one drop, so I'll start there. I'll go with like one Kari Zevs and then figure out like... Because I think this is a matchup where our removal is going at the creatures. Where it's not going at our opponent. We could not do that, that would be good. I guess we're just going to attack. The Skull Scar Mage is going to do some damage, like, especially if we get into a position where we're going to start. I don't think this burn's going upstairs. I think we're going to be hitting creatures. I think I'm, I'm trying to, like, broaden my gameplay a little bit, Laflame, to tell you the truth. So I think I shocked this, play Bomat Courier, and attack with the team. Plus, also, like, I'm trying to do more streaming, and, like, some people get bored of, like, playing the same thing every day, and that happens. This Bomat Courier is going to be sweet. So I doubt my opponent has a lot of removal. And I think I'm getting more into, like, when Magic, where I just want to, like, kill people. Like, I'm not worried about... There's a cub. I'm not really worried about, you know, grinding people out anymore. I kind of just want to, like, murder people. I guess we... Sh what do I shoot? Do I shoot this? Yeah, um... If I shoot this, the problem is I can't attack with anything. If I don't shoot this and I just play the Ferocidon, and this is up, so I think I'm just going to shoot this. And then get in for more damage. This feels right. Now we have two cards underneath our Boma, and we're okay discarding this Ferocidon. It's like not exactly what we want to do, but I think my opponent's going to be dead next turn anyways, so... It's not necessarily dead, but being able to make it so they can't... Because I'm assuming they're playing Soul Type Humbler, they probably play the Black Cartouche, and this is going to make it so the Black Cartouche doesn't give their creatures hexproof. Yo, the Flame, I made this sweet survey. You should, you should take this. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, that just does it. Deals three damage to target creature. And then we get in for enough damage here. I bet I sideboard some more removal on the draw. Like I've gotta I've gotta figure out or sideboard out like maybe these soul scar mages aren't very good. Or the Ferocidons aren't great. Maybe I just need to bring in, like, a couple more removal spells. But I can see these being poor. And maybe, like, these wanting to come in. And cutting, like, probably a Soul Scar Mage. This gives me a way to like attack through if they don't have a trampling effect. Because the, these seem slow. Maybe the I don't think the harvester is where I want to be, or the on crop. I don't want to be faltering affecting into blossoming defense. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with this. I don't really know if this is right or not. It's my first time playing mono red, so. We're gonna give it. We're gonna give it a whirl, but it, it might be something. It might not be exactly what we're looking for. So 
Oh, man, what a day. I've actually had a good day today. I woke up at like a respectable time. Went to church with my wife. Saw my wife sing a really good piece. Then, uh, see, yeah, now this is the problem with having like such a high curve. We have double glory bringer. Yeah, we got to ship this. Now we have double hazard in the glory bringer. Let's go to five. Yeah, that is the best hand we've seen. I think I'm going to put that on the bottom. I think I need something before this. Because right now it's only a shock. So, yeah, my wife sang a really good piece today at church with her sister. Oh, that plays Rampager. That's sweet. Um, what else is I going to say? So, wife sang a good piece, then went shopping, got a couple things. Now I'm going to have to go shopping a little bit later. I'm going to just shock this. I don't really don't want to deal with Bristling Hydra next turn. Two drop? Two drop would be sweet. Alright, I mean, at least we're going to be able to play our, our you know, Hazret and our Sand Strangler. I feel like if there's a card that can bring me back, it's Hazret. Hey, thanks, man. Okay, there's a Refiner. Three drop. Nope. Well, at least we're, we're like somewhat positioned okay for a longer game. I'm really afraid if my opponent drops a a bristling hydra here, I'm going to be nervous. That I'll be pretty worried about that. But with these deserts, I mean, if we can if we can kind of hang on here and grind out. Oh, there's a harvester. Okay. So I'm going to try to Sand Strangler this. Oh, the Green Belt comes in now. That's a pretty big game. I knew they had that Rampager. So we smoke this. All right, that's not bad. I've always, whenever I've had this card play against me or seen this thing played, I've been thoroughly impressed with it. It must have been sweet and limited. But now we just like, pew, we get in there. So in order to play Hazard next turn, we need to hit like a shock. If we hit a shock, then I can go Hazard, shock something, and attack. This is going to be annoying because you're just going to gain a bunch of life off this. He's probably going to like turn the lifelink on and then pump it a million times. Maybe he's going to fire up the Heshup Oasis. This is probably, that's probably a good, I think that's a good play for my opponent. Get in there for six with the lifelink. Now I kind of might have to hold back against this Ferocidon or this Rampager because it's huge. So I think I attack. I think I braid this now and then I attack. Because he can't animate this and I don't want to give him the chance to do that. My opponent's going to hit me to six. No, maybe I'll stay back and block. Because six, they have three cards. Yeah, I think we're just going to take this out now. And then look to... I'll probably just block this. And then try to see if I can get it at the end of his turn. I could have double shot this, but I want to get the lifelinker out. So I'll try to chump here. And then EOT lightning strike it. If that doesn't work out, then... I'll just play Hazard and have this on D. It doesn't quite feel like a two for one. I guess the Rogue Refiner um, 
did replace itself, so we're kind of two for one ourselves here. Even though this thing killed the rubber refiner, that was only one for one there. That's not good. Okay. All right, we're getting Hazard in play is going to be pretty good. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have a way to make his creatures unblockable. Because now I can kind of, I can eat whichever creature, one of his creatures, and this Bomat Courier just kind of chilling. I'll probably block something with it. But now we're just kind of in a holding pattern. Because this Hazard is going to be able to take care of what one of these attackers, or it's going to cost my opponent's cards. And then we're winning, I mean, we have these Ramanop Ruins. As long as my opponent doesn't find, like, the blue cartouche. If they get the blue cartouche, we're in trouble. But as long as that doesn't happen. What is this? What is my opponent waiting on here? Is this, like, an unsummon effect? I'm pretty sure if they had anything, they would just snap it off here. Like, I don't know what this is doing here. It wasn't on someone. Okay. So now I probably blocked this because this is can get bigger. Trample. So they pop this three times to nine. I die. I guess I'll block here, see if they don't do it. But now we're dead here because of this. This is going to get up there. Yep, Pona got it. We got pummeled. And we molded, we molded five in game three. And I, I don't know a lot about this matchup. Like, this matchup could be... You know, I don't really know how to play this one. All right. So let's get in another league match. That was fun. Like, there was a lot going on. I think I could have won game one. Like, I, I, I didn't play, like, as well as I could have, and I could have given myself a chance. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Moto's tweaking out. Bye, viewers. I hope everyone's having a uh, good Sunday. Just chilling out. Or at least I hope they're relaxing. I certainly love to do me some relaxing on a Sunday. Doing a whole lot of nothing, watching some football. Nope, my opponent did not want to play. Oh, I guess we got into it. I'd like to get at least one league in before I have to... Uh, before I have to get out of here to get to do some work, I would like to roll the die or go first. Yeah, this hand seems pretty good. I think that my goal with this hand is to try to pace myself to where I can play Hazaret on four and attack with it. So I want to be like conscious of you know my cards in the hand. Island. Shock. Yes, yeah, so I think I, against that basic island, This it's either a control deck or it's a God Pharaoh's Gift deck. And we're pretty well set up against God Pharaoh's Gift with the Abrade and this. So I think I'm just going to shock my opponent, get in for four. We're going to go... We're going to go up to five cards next turn, down to three. Oh, I don't want to pay two. I think we just want to keep, like, empty the cards out of our hands. I know this is, Kim, you could do, like, you can do something cool where you hit the uh, champion of wits with this. And if they don't know how that works and they still go to draw, then they just discard two cards. But I think I just want to try to power through 
what's going on here. I'm glad that we have this Ferocidon in here. I mean, it's not very good for playing against a control deck. It is very good if we are playing against um, whatever it is out of the sideboard. Uh, um, God Pharaoh's Gift. OG Glacial Fortress. I wonder if this is the first version, the one that was printed. So this feels like, oh uh, yeah, it's a control deck because they cycled the sensor. So there's a braid, it's probably dead in our hand. This is probably going to get countered. No. Okay, so we're playing against Esper. We're going to attack again. Play. Try to, like, paste this Hazret to where I can play it and attack. Or I can attack with my creatures and play it post combat and attack the next turn to play around like a settle the wreckage. Okay, they've got that. Yeah, it's definitely an approach deck if they're digging, if they're playing Supreme Wells. So I think I'm going to attack with this and play Hazaret after combat, and then next turn try to set something up where I can play Bomac Courier, toss a card, and then maybe attack with Hazaret, depending on what my opponent's got. And again, if my opponent uses a counterspell on this Hazaret, at least they're not using a counterspell, or at least not digging with their Supreme Will. All right, this is indicative of them not having it. They probably have, I would assume they've got something like um, Settle the Wreckage in their hand. And we'll be able to play around Settle all right with this Hazret. How's it going today, Nilla? They put a card on top, so that must mean this hazard's not resolving. Oh, they're looking for another opt. So they're looking for this tells me at least they have Essence Scatter in their deck. Alright, that's a big game. So next turn I'm gonna play Bomac Courier and probably not attack with Hazard. Unless my opponent gives me... Okay, so now we can attack with Hazret. Oh, this is sweet. We don't even have to pitch a card. And now my opponent's dead in two to just Hazret. It's like a land. You're going to be able to flip this. So if they have like land approach, then they go to 11. We've got two, one, two, three, eight, 
fling. Yeah, we can't exactly kill them. I would need like a, a I would need a uh, haste right off the top to kill them. Okay, so there's the approach. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Nathan. I think I play this land, and then I attack. So I kind of want to have the lands in hand, the lands in play, to be able to do more with these couriers. Because this is one, two, three, eight. Fling this is ten. I need to hit a shock or a lightning strike. Well, I guess if I fling this, then it's not good. So one, two, three, eight. So lightning strike kills my opponent. Sack this thing. Find me a lightning strike. Oh, hold priority when you sack the bow mat and sack the other and you'll get all four cards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That is cool. I did not think of that. So is this a ramen up? I think that my opponent, it's not worth, I might as well just sack this. Yeah, I didn't know that, Nathan. That's cool. All right, we didn't find it. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have another another um, whatever it is approach. I mean, they're, they're tapping like they... Yep, they got it. You said Harsh Mentor would be great. Why would Harsh Mentor be great? It's just a two, it's just a bear, right? Oh, it's good because of this. This search, okay. Yeah. Took me a hot second. So I think these are braids are garbage. Um, the Chandras are probably good. Um, I'd bring in one more card. Maybe the Harvester's all right, because it can play around Wrath. Oh, keep the Braids for Hulks, that makes sense. You want all three of these? My opponent's kind of Scarab Gods. So maybe I want like Pia. If they're if we're if we're worried about like interaction, maybe Pia is good because it gives me another um gives me a way to like make it so he can't block. Scare of God is nothing. I kind of want to leave my Phrasodons in because if they like, in case they play the cat. Let me just go these four for these four. Your braids are good. I will take your word for it, my friend. Dude, Frosted just sweet. Yeah, Nathan, when you were right before you came, he. We actually had two Ferocidons in our hand, but he actually, he had the counterspell for both of them. I would like to play first. This hand seems slow. Oh, you did? I think I'm gonna mulligan. This hand seems too slow, Nathan.
Yeah. All right, it seems good. Play Soul Scar Mage into Kenra. I don't think. I don't think we want this. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in the bottom. Yeah. That's what my heart told me. Nope, not car reserve. Well, maybe I play car reserve, get in for one, and then play Kenra next turn. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. My opponent might play a creature. I don't know. There's like a chance. So this is one. Next turn I get in for two, four, six. Play my land first so I don't get censored. Oh, we get pushed. Okay. You speak truths, my friend. Okay, so I guess I'll play Scavenger Grounds. Get in for three. We need to not draw any more lands. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we don't need any more lands to win this game. I guess I'm going to play the Soul Scar Mage out. Like, we're not sandbagging anything here. I'm going to leave the ruins in my hand. Just to like. Oh, I should have played my land so he can't supreme will this. I mean, I doubt he would supreme will this. Like, that seems kind of loose, but I still shouldn't give him the option to. All right, yes, and scatter that. So we lost the first match, Nathan. We lost to the Soul Tide Pummeler deck. We mulled to five. In game, um, there's those attack mold to five in game, uh, whatever it is. Game two, I think I'm gonna play Ramen Up Ruins and pass and just like do some. I don't really want to commit this for us, I don't want to get like, I don't really want to have anything after a wrath. So I think I'm just going to pass. Because we've got three on board. Next turn goes to seven. End of turn goes to five. So five and seven. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're just kind of sitting back, chilling on it. I got over 7,000 views today. Well, not just today, but my channel got up over 7,000 views, which is pretty sweet. You don't throw ruins. We don't have any fives in our deck. Or are you saying you want uh, throw? You throw the scavenger grounds, right? Oh, okay. I'm going to get settled here. No. Okay. That's all right. So now I'll play the Ferocidon. And I'll keep this land in my hand. That kind of sucks they gain two life, but I, I don't think... I don't really think I'm supposed to run that Ferocidon out there. At least now I can hold up Scavenger Grounds. If my opponent tries to like Gear Hulk, two tap.
He would have used it. Oh, yeah, he was just done in response. So I think I want to play Crasher. Because if he had Settle, I think he would have done it last turn. It's four mana. He'd have got both creatures. So I think I'm going to play this. Play Land, Crasher, Hold Up Scavenger Grounds, and Attack. But if he hulks, I guess he eats... If he hulks, he eats this, he takes four. And then he's got to deal with this next turn. But we can scavenger grounds away whatever my opponent hulks. Because this is one, two, yeah, I think that's the play there. And if my opponent hulks trying to, trying to like counter this... And if we get settled here, that's that's gonna suck. But it looks like that's what's happening. No, we're getting gear halt. Okay. Comes in, he triggers. Okay, so now one, two, sacrifice this. Yes. So now my opponent eats this on cops crasher and takes four. So now my opponent has to deal with this, or I get in there for three, throw ramen up at them. My opponent attacks, we know they have an answer for this. For they have some answer in here somewhere. Okay, they're not attacking. So my opponent's gonna block this. We'll just get in with this. It's gonna suck if my opponent double gear hulks. But if they play double gear hulk, they have to block this. That's what they're gonna do. So this is a free attack. So you suck it in chat. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to attack with a Soulscar Mage. Even though if my opponent has another Gear Hulk, then I'm missing out on a point of damage. That point could matter. Because then it lets me draw live to Lightning Strike. So I guess I'm fine if my opponent eats this. If my opponent just eats this. But then they need a removal spell for this thing. This isn't really doing anything anyways. So I guess what's more likely, my opponent's got like a cast out, or my opponent has another Gear Hulk. If they have another Gear Hulk, this comes into play, they take one. They take one off of this. I chuck Ramanop Ruins at their face. So then they go to two, and then I have a lot of live draws. Yeah. There's, this this soul scar mage isn't doing anything. My opponent is doing something. Settle the wreckage. Okay. That's kind of sad, but what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna chuck this ruins at his face. At the end of the turn. I guess I have enough mana where maybe I don't have to chuck this ramen up. Because if I find a, like a scavenger ground, then I'm going to want this in play. So I don't think I'm going to chuck this ruins. I've got seven lands, eight lands. I think I think I can wait with this. My opponent approaches. So now I am going to chuck it. Well, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. All right, I guess we go in. 
We get a redraw with our bow mat. Get another bow mat. Play this guy out here and hopefully we don't get approached here. Don't approach me, bro. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck this ramen up ruins this turn because we might want to do like a couple different things with this Bowmat career. Maybe I should be playing approach. That is not necessarily my game plan, my style. Jeez. We're drawing enough lands to be a control back for sure. Doesn't really do that much. Yeah, you're telling me about it. I mean, I'm going to play it. Tick up. Maybe I'll find something. Like, we, we don't have a lot of time to write home to mom. Cancel? He's literally got a cancel on his deck. Yeah, we're probably dead now. But... Such is life. They probably drew something like another Gear Hulk or something to make them more confident about this. Cancel. Oh, the cat. Nice. Well, you might put it to like F6 through his next four turns. Yeah, we're, we're good here. Oh, uh, so close, but yet so far. God, I can't believe they've... I lost a guy to cancel in his deck. No. I mean, he probably just has too many uh, whatever they are. Can't even think. He might have too many uh, just want like a fifth dissolve. Or no, what, it's not dissolve. What is it? What's the three? Disallow. So... So I've been working on putting, I got the tip jar added to my uh, to my stream. I might have to move it over a little bit. Actually, I'm going to do that right now because you can't see the animation go in there if it, if it magically happens because of my chat. So I'm going to move this over. Now he just doesn't want to play this loud. Maybe. We got one. Now we got to win three in a row. Oh, we got the bit, man. Thank you very much, Nilla. Look at that tip jar. We are just, we are going crazy. I think I'm going to keep this. We need some lands, but we have some interaction for early game, and then we've got our we got Big Daddy. Big Daddy has daddy. Thank you very much, Nilla. Much appreciated. All the salt. <laughs> so swamps. We're probably playing against the mono black aggro deck, and I would assume my hand is pretty good against that deck. Pume. Uh, do one damage up here. I'm going to play the Mentor. Yep. I would like to draw a red land off the top. Because if it's a red land, 
then I can go like Shock and Kenra. So now my opponent's like Telegraph and a Stamina. But if that, but I'll just Kenra it and make it so this can't block. Make it so creatures can't block and attack. We are playing a combo deck here. Pass with our colorless land up. Okay, so now they got the dead lands. So they're going to be able to kill one of my creatures. I feel like I should kill this because this is going to like gain and drain me. Be pretty annoying. Do to just attack with Mentor, a Bone Picker. Nice. All right, what is our plan? I guess I sh attack with both my creatures, and then I can, like, shock this thing. I definitely want to shock something right now, while my opponent can't Supernatural Stamina anything. So maybe I just want to go in with this Kenra, because we're hoping it comes back. With the thing with his because he would maybe block just attack with a mentor because he may block with his thing with his trick but i couldn't play the kenra and have red mana up right nathan because i've got two colorless lands i think this turn i'm attacking with both creatures and then we're going to see if i play a mentor or just shock something Oh, you had attacked first. Okay. Or use the falter when we needed it. Okay. I think we're going to attack with both creatures here and see what happens. <laughs> I kind of want to kill this, but I want I want to use my shock when he can't supernatural stamina anything. So would you have held a creature up? You have more cards than it has, right? You just want to trade here? Yes, okay. I think I'm going to trade this right now and make it so he prevents him gaining life. Kind of mopey, but I would rather get beat with this than have my opponent like gain life. Gain and drain. Hopefully we draw a removal spell so that I can... Or draw another red land. But yeah. So there's the stamina. And now they're going to bring this back. Okay. So I think I want to get this off the battlefield. Or at least get the card out of his hand. So the next turn I can maybe go like a braid. And so I'm going to do this right now. I would assume that this... I'm going to attack first. Because so let's just bring it back tapped. Tap. So we're gonna do this now. We're tell he's telegraphing it, but like he's gonna be able to keep this up for the rest of the game. And I'd like to have my opponent like per work with like top decking information. Or maybe it's better to just solidify my board because this blocks this. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That was dumb. Because this just eats this. And if he wants to use that on an offense, at least it kills it doesn't kill his creature, but this is gonna force him to use it if he attacks. Yeah, I got, I got, to, it took me a second, but I got Takari. All right, maybe he doesn't have it. Or maybe he's just trying to, like, hold up for this. All right. That's okay. Land. All right, we'll go up at him. So he's just bluffing it last turn. So now we attack with everything. 
He probably... I'm going to kill this before he has a chance to draw a card to save it. I would assume... I'm going to save this Lightning Strike, because this Lightning Strike might be going upstairs. Because this is five points. I assume my opponent crews. My opponent crews, I'm going to abrade it. They take five. And then I don't think they can attack, or they have to if near Deadlands something. Okay. Now we can wait until our opponent um, goes to crew this Aether Sphere Harvester and then abrade the Harvester. So I think that's what we're going to do here. If my opponent does nothing. I'll probably send a Lightning Strike at my opponent's face. The end of the turn, then attack. Oh, I should have killed this in response, because now he gains one life. Oh, that was bad. Now it buys him another turn. Gosh darn it. Because now I hit this. And I guess my opponent doesn't attack, and I would have been all right. Yeah, that was stupid. I should have abraded that Ethan's for a harvester. Yep. No, you're right, Nathan. My opponent's probably like, why is he making this play? Like, he let me gain a life, because now I would have killed him. Which is a little frustrating. So I guess they deadlands this second main phase. So that I only do a little two damage. Oh, they bring this back, okay. Gosh. So now I attack... And abrade this. They go to four and then untap, attack them again, and hopefully we get to lightning strike them. Why not attack, Nathan? He can do it with the Deadlands. I think I attack, like, kill this on my main phase, and then he attacks for three and gains one, so he attacks for four, and the only way that I die is if he gets the thing off the top. So he goes he goes to three, to seven, then I, if he dead lands, I still need to find one more point of damage. So maybe I just kill this bone picker and... Yeah, I think I'm, no, I'm gonna attack and kill the bone picker on my main phase of the abrade. So I'm gonna go to five. So if they don't deadlands me, then I should be in good shape. And if they drew supernatural stamina, then I'm dead. All right, they deadlands, which we're still good because we get in with this the monkey moron, and then we just lightning strike them. That was close. I mean, if we had drawn a second red source at any point in that game, we would have just ran him over. But because we wouldn't be able to get this hazard in play. Nope, clicked out of it. Begin sideboarding. So I assume the aggro mirror for us at on isn't where we want to be. I'm going to guess Crasher's not good because he's got um, whatever they are. He's got vehicles. I probably think I want my own vehicles, Nathan. And then I probably want like a Sand Strangler. Another Abrade. We really, we want Ferocid on, even on the draw.
You want these even on the draw. Okay. I, I can't think that I want these crashers. These on-crop crashers can't be good, right? Because of vehicles. You take out lightning strikes over shocks. I guess shocks more... What do I bring in, though? You want to take out the Harsh Mentors, even though he has... You want the Harsh Mentors, even though he's got so many uh, vehicles, like he can't... Like, this is going to make it so he has to take damage to crew his vehicles? I guess I can see that when the shock... Talk, when I'm talking about the shocks. Crash was coming out. Oh, plus four. Okay, you're saying we wanted those. Okay. All right, let's. So these come in. The two mentors come out. And one shot. Nine two strikes, crashes, and mentors. You want a plus a raid, plus four. Oh, we're at 61. There we go. All right. Okay, so I was just confused there. With I wasn't necessarily getting what you were saying. That makes sense. I was just confused. All right, it's a good hand. Oh, this thing just brick walls me. This thing just wrecks my Bomac career. All right, so we have to kill that. We'll save the Kenra. And we'll just smoke this. And the next turn I can go either Kenra Bomac Courier or I can go Harvester. Okay, my opponent's got that. That's not good. Okay, so whenever a creature your opponent... So now I kind of want to go Harvester, next turn, Sand Strangler this, and crew and attack with the Harvester. So I think I'm going to attack for one, play Harvester, Sand Strangler this next turn, and then attack with the Harvester. Gain a little bit of life, hopefully swing this race a little more. And then this can be kind of an explosive turn with the Kenra. I definitely see what you're talking about when when sand like sandbagging this Kenra. Okay, so now I've got to get this. This is whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one plus one counter on this. Yeah, we're gonna be able to, like triple spell next turn. Hit this. Crew here, come in for four, gain three. So he's going to take four, go to 13. We'll go up to 13. Yeah, this is a good strangle target. I love this card, Nathan. Okay, so you Henny gains. Now, should I attack with my heart? What if my harvester gets pushed? It'd have to be his last card. It would have to be Fatal Push. So I'm just going to hope he doesn't have it. Because this does turn on Revolt.
I feel like if he doesn't have Fatal Push in the air, he's in a lot of trouble. So maybe I should have attacked first, missed out on one point of damage. All right, I feel like we're in a good spot now. Because next turn, I'll falter effect this. She just deadlandsing this? Okay, that's all right. This Soul Scar Mage can actually get through this Yeheni, which is kind of cool. I feel like this is a race my opponent's going to struggle to win. I still want to play the Soul Scar Mage so that I can crew this, though. Like, I want to get the Soul Scar Mage into play. Because this makes it so I can attack, play Courier, attack for 7, get a card, and be able to activate it while holding up Shock. Because next turn, I just go Soul Scar Mage, Bomat Courier, hit him for 7. Or then I can, like, Shock him if I have to, and then I can Earthshaker Kenra to, like... Or I can like shock this if he tries to block. So I think it's good to play the the mage. Dude, I love Ether Sphere Harvester. Cause now I can like if he holds back blockers, shock this. Yeah, they just concede. My opponent's name's kind of funny, Taco Farmer. Wait one second. Run, run, run. All right, return. Jump in here. I'm gonna get some water while we're waiting for this. What are you up to today, Nathan? And just hanging out at home. Oh, here we go. Studying up for your finals. Yeah. I have not been able to attack with Hazard very many times. Oh, nice. Tell your mom I said hi. You and your mom will cycle. Oh, this hand's kind of a mulligan to six. I'm going to assume one of these is going to die. So I guess I'm going to keep it. It's not really great, but I have two deserts, like... I'm going to be able to probably, if I draw a hazard at any point, I'm probably going to be able to play it. You pitch this. That's totally legit. Maybe I should have. Yeah. My whole thing was like, I feel like there's a good chance one of these dies. And like, I'm going to hit my land drop. So I'm going to be able to like, eventually, like pretty much every draw in my deck is going to be good. Except lands. Now we're doing another land. I guess we'll just lead off with this. The Ramanat Mirror. I probably have to kill a creature here. 
right, yeah, I'm going to, I think I'm going to kill that. Well, I guess I could actually play my, play my own one. Because if my opponent wants to get on the board, they're going to have to kill it. And this just blocks the two ones. So yeah, I'm going to play my old one. My own one. And then if he trades here, or if they go to like kill this, then it unlocks my next one. Okay, so he falters. You would have killed it? Okay. They faltered the card. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah, I didn't think about that, Nathan. So I hit this. I attack them for six. For, for three. They go to 16. They attack me for at least three. And if they have a removal spell, it's four or a creature. I probably just lightning strike and play defense. Because then next turn I can go like guy guy. But I assume this is going to die if I leave it back here to block. Well, they have Hazard. They have to go land Hazard. They have two cards in hand. I can't attack, which is like it still is not great. But I think I just play. I think I probably will just sit on this. No way he doesn't. That they don't have it. I think I'm just going to sit on this. Kill this at the beginning of combat. Do this so we can get our F6 value. So we take four. And then we play do dude. Well, I should have watched the clock in this matchup. Thanks, pro tip, Nathan. So if I trade with this, I probably have to next turn Ramen or Scavenger Ground so they can't reanimate this. But let's just hope that one time he doesn't have the has no hazard. I mean, we got a block. I can definitely see where this does not end well. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> like, I don't think you can not block there, right? Like... You don't block the mage. But if I don't block the mage, I mean, he's like, I don't know. I'm sitting on here watching my opponent accumulate these deserts, and I feel like if I don't protect my life total, they're just going to, like, wreck me. I don't know. I mean, we're in a tough spot regardless. I guess I'll play this. Oh, it's all... Am I blocking with this? What am I doing? I'm probably going to block here, block this. This sucks. I think I'm just going to attack with this, play Soul Scar Mage, and then kill both creatures. Yeah, I, I, I saw that, and I knew that going in, Nathan. I just thought that with you know double ruins in play, if I take one point or don't block this, they shock me, I take four. And then they just start doing this. So I just thought, like, I was stuck. I, I realized that it's rough on the surface. I think I'm going to try to trade this Bomat Courier off with this Earthshaker Kenra and block here. I guess I should have waited on my Scavenger Grounds. 
But I guess if I wanted to do this, you want to play around Scavenger Grounds, you could do it in his main phase, but that seems pretty unlikely of him to do. Okay, that doesn't block. Now we'll scavenger grounds. So I play this trade block. My opponent does two damage to me. So I've got six damage on board with the Ramanop ruins to me. But I can't do it this turn. I think I want to play this Bomat Courier and hold my land. And then block here, trade here. And then desert again to get it out. Yeah, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place for sure. And then I'm going to, at the end of my opponent's combat phase, I'll scavenger grounds if this works. Just don't give him priority to reanimate this. Hazard. God. And I'll just... Might as well just sit here and wait, like, because he's going to do two. I mean, this, say, this basically saves me a turn just sitting here. Yeah, we get Ramen out, down to five. My opponent shot. They didn't use the shock last turn. So they get him for one. We're not ruins in here. This scavenger grounds was sweet. Uh, the Ferocidon's probably the nail in the coffin there. Yep. We shall concede. That I board this match at Nathan. Do we do we cut like the little stuff and go bigger? Like bring in the glory bringers. Let me bring this in. This in. Probably these come in. Even though I can definitely see them not being great. You like these gone. And then this definitely comes in, I think. Then maybe one of these comes in. You like Chandra in the mono red mirror? Three harvesters. It's too many cards, right? Oh yeah, the glory bringer. I feel like this harvester is meant. If I'm not bringing this harvester in, where am I bringing this in, right? Like his harvester is probably like on the draw. I could see boarding out a glory bringer for the harvester. Yeah, I can cut one of these for one of these. Yeah, I think I just want the harvesters. 
Right, I mean, if we're going to cut, like, leaving one of these, Sean, these strikes in feels kind of mopey when we can have the fourth harvester. No Chandra. Chandra, not Chandra, sorry. No Chandra. Bring it in. All right, I'm going to cut this lighting strike, Nathan. You only want one glory bee? I'll board out a glory bringer on the draw. I think I've already submit, and it's 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 got me off of here for strike. Okay, I'll board one out when I'm on the draw. All right, we'll keep this. Um, do we start with Soul Scarred Mage? I probably should start with Bomat Courier just to make sure that we get a card under it and we can get that going. I'm going to lead with Mountain because there's a chance that we want to go like Soul Scar Mage into, um, like into Shock next turn. Absolute blasphemy. Five viewers, I hope everybody's having a good day watching the stream here and hanging out. I appreciate everybody uh, stopping by. Okay, this is going to die. Should always be leading on mountain. Okay. So I'm going to attack with this first. Not give my opponent any information. Mount go. And then I'm going to play Kari Zev. Hold up with this Soul Scar Mage until I can hit them with like two red spells. Because this is the only way that I use my mana efficiently. Okay. SM SS SSM to Nug Hazard. What does that mean? Oh, Soul Scar Mage to Nug Hazard. Okay, I see what you're saying. I guess I'm going to attack with Arkari Zev. Get one point in. And then play Soul Scar Mage and pass. This is kind of mopey. Generally, you want a soul. So I just should leave my shock in. Is that what we're getting into here? Maybe it's worth attacking with Beaumont so that if he blocks. But given you can't do anything. Well, if my opponent blocks this, I'm going to shock the Karizev. Let's turn shock into an actual card here. Oh, the Karizev has first strike? Sad. No, it's fine. Yeah, I figured that out. It took me a hot second. But now I can attack with it. Because... And then I can attack with this too, right? So I can attack with each one of my creatures here. If my opponent tries to block one, I can... Sol I can... Kari Z I guess it... My opponent tries to kill one of these. Kills it in response. Even the courier? Okay. Yeah, attacking with the courier makes sense. Hopefully this resolved. That resolved. Holy shnikes. What is my opponent doing? I can't imagine what they have in their hand. Their hand must be just all expensive things. They are Orkari Zevs. Six fucking So there's a lightning strike or a braid. Lightning strike that, okay. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Land. Okay, nice. So 
So I think I attack before playing the land and then shock something when my opponent goes to block again to just not give them information. And then I might like shock them the end of turn or I, can, I don't think this is a hand where I'm going to use where I'm going to get rid of Hazret. Or I mean, I mean, like exile the cards. I'm like, I'm not looking to trade my Bowmat Courier in. And if my opponent doesn't block, then I can just play Ethersphere Harvester. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I don't think this hand doesn't look like something I want to dump, but you never know. Like, if my opponent doesn't do anything, doesn't block, I'm going to play Harvester. If my opponent does block, then I'm going to shock, and then I'm going to have shock up again. My opponent fell for it twice. I mean, but maybe he has to block. Like, maybe he's just in a hard way. So I think I'm going to shock my opponent at the end of the turn. What is he doing? So, I can't, yeah, I kind of want to shock my opponent. I don't know. Depends on what happens with this. Because if I shock my opponent, then it sets up land hazard. He's exerting. You would shock this. But I don't really care. Because this is 2, 7, 6, and my opponent's at 1. You shock Glorybringer here. Okay, so you're saying this better insulates you? Okay. I can buy that. It's definitely tight. <sighs> All right. We did not get a land. I think I still play. Now, now I don't think I can. I don't think I can hold up for this harvester because if I. If I get Harvester, like if I get a land, I'm attacking with Hazard next turn anyways. Exactly. So I almost want to do it right now. Like I kind of just want to shock my opponent, draw six cards and see what happens. Or just shock this Glorybringer. Yeah, I think I just want to shock Glorybringer, draw six cards. Do it on end step. Wait to see what he does. Do it on end step. You're talking about, right, what are you talking about? Do it on the end step. See what he does. You want to shock a hazard? Why would I want to shock a hazard, Nathan, when I can't? But like, what if I find something main phase that I want to play? Like, what if I find a two drop? Like, if I go shock here, exile my hand, play land, do something. Like, if I, if I find another, because of my, my six cards... Take Boma on end step. Okay, sure, yeah, but like, I kind of want to do this main phase so that I can draw cards and then look to play like land something else so then I can begin to empty my hand so that I can untap with less cards in my hand for Hazret. Yeah, y'all, that's what we're that's what we're doing here. Get rid of this. Play out the Soul Scar Mage. Next turn we can play Glory Bringer, or we can play Earthshaker Kenra, depending on what happens. And say stuck it in chat. 
Nathan, you're all about the shit talking today. All right, glory be from our opponent. Now we don't exert our glory bringer. We're just coming in hot. <laughs> don't listen to these fools. I can't exert it. Yeah, it's because of this. But I was talking about, like, maybe even if he had a creature, I don't even exert it. Because it's actually kind of difficult to kill this, right? In the in the, in the Mono Red Mirror. I know some people play Cut to Ribbons in their sideboard in order to deal with this card. All right. Mom and Pop. So now I just exert on this. Falter on that, right? Um, I would rather keep Pia in hand in case my opponent has another one. Shock this. Okay. Opponent still dies, I think, because I just exert on this. Oh, they were dead anyways. Even didn't matter. Okay. So I exert here. There's nothing my opponent can do. They're out of cards. Okay. It's still right to do this. I think. Yeah. I think there's Chandra's defeat in this board. I thought we brought it in, though. Maybe we didn't bring it in. Maybe it's one of those days. No, uh, yeah, we brought it in. We brought the one defeat in. So now we're going to take a glory bringer out and bring a lightning strike back in. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, I was pretty sure. Like, I was like, Ozden 92. I was like 90% sure he was dead. I was just like going over it in my head and making sure. So do I want Pia Nalar on the draw? Like, do I just want to get rid of this glory bringer and be like more defensive on the draw? Like, I could see cutting this. Maybe, like, Earthshaker Kenra is not very good. And maybe... We didn't see any vehicles from our opponent that game. So maybe Harsh Mentor is not great. You cut the Strangler in this matchup? I guess he's boarding out some of his littler creatures. Stranglers, like, clear blockers and kill you, which is not really what we're doing on the draw, I think. Yeah, take a look at No, I didn't see the mentors. Yeah, I'm more... I think I want to cut these. Go something like this. Like, let's see what this looks like. Let's see how, how our curve looks. And we don't want, like, Chandra or anything like that. Like, we don't want something that can gain us some advantage. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. You like bringing in, what do I cut for the strikes? I guess we already submitted. I can see we're having maybe a little bit more removal would have been nice. All right, this hand's pretty good. We got a removal spell into a harvester, into something that can crew it or a hazret. I think we're going we're gonna to give this the old keep. Give this to college try. Incoming Bomat career. That's a pretty good draw. So now we'll just wait. I don't think I'm going to shock this yet. Do 11 removal spells, you should be good. I can definitely see where it's rough. Like, you'd want to maybe get more, but... So I think if my opponent, like, I'm tempted to just shock this at the end of the turn if my opponent doesn't give me a better target just to use my mana and keep get the cards out of my hand. 
I think I'm just going to shock this. Like, it kind of feels mopey, but I just want to get cards out of my hand. And I don't want to play cards that have a removal spell. Because my opponent's, gonna, my opponent's got, like, telegraphing a removal spell here. And I think I want to just play the land and abrade what my opponent plays, then untap him. Because they're telegraphing a removal spell. And if I can if I can sink my opponent's mana for a turn while using mine, I think it's a good way to catch up. So I think we're just going to pass. All right, I don't do anything. My opponent doesn't do anything. It kind of hurts my hazard right now that we get talking about it. I guess we play Harvester now, and the next turn I can play two two drops. I assume this is going to get smoked, but I think I got to be mana efficient. But yeah, it gets braided. You think I was overthinking it, Osden? So would you have just played the, the Kari Zev? I guess that makes sense because it allows me to play Hazret. So now what do I want to do? Do I want to play two two drops? So my opponent's going to go up to four cards. I go land, ditch. They need to do one more card. So I guess I can go, like, play Kari Zev, play Kenra, and then next turn play a Hazard. Now I, think it, now I feel like I'm dead because of what I did. I see what you're talking about now. Now I feel, like, significantly behind. The Kenra doesn't really do anything, so maybe I play my own Hazard. So next turn I can, like, pitch a Hazard or pitch a Kenra, play this. Play a land, and I've got two cards. And I guess I'm going to double spell. Yeah, now I can see where I messed up, and now I just got to, like, get these cards out of my hand, and hopefully this Hazret, like, brings me home. I can see where I got too passive. At least my opponent's going up to four cards, so it might be a little difficult for them to get their hazard going on. A glory bringer here would suck. Or like pitch a card. Okay, they play their own card Zev. They toss a land. So now do I block this? Block this, strike this, block this. How do I get my own hazard right in the play? Block, strike. I think I got a block. Then I strike this. The problem is, okay, so there's a hazard at least. So now I can like lightning strike this, play my land, or I can play Hazret, lightning strike, and pitch next turn. I feel like if I don't block though, like because there's just so much damage on the board, like I'm gonna be able to take two from this every turn. I feel like I've just got like I definitely see odds in where I messed up like two turns ago, and I just needed to empty my hand. And a braid. Then do I chump? I definitely don't like the fact that I'm going to be like <laughs> my opponent's trolling my lands. Yeah, I think I have to like just chump here because I don't want to play my Hazret six turn with uh, ten life down from or nine life down from his Hazret.
Oh. That's gross. That's just gross. So now I need a spell that I can play so that I can block here or I'm just dead on board. All right, man, at least I can block his hazard with my hazard. The next turn, I can probably have to pitch my hazard and not bring back this Kenra. Oh, now he just throws the Thopter. Ugh. Because now he just chucks the Thopter at this, and then I can't block. Oh, that sucks. I think I did that to myself, though, after playing here. Like, I think I made the mistake. I think I, I think I did need to just, like, play cards out. Exactly. I think I made the mistake that I had to, like, give him more targets. So I guess I will finish, play this league match one more. I will finish out the league. Yeah, I, should, I, I understand that now, Odson. This is my first league with the deck. It's the first time I played with it. I just grabbed it because I wanted to stream something different today. Seven viewers, guys, everybody, thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you guys, like, have been uh, watching the stream for a while or um, are just new to the stream and want to help give me some tips, I would appreciate it if you filled that survey out. I think it only takes two two minutes to do. I've been watching everybody uh, set it up. So, um, everyone watching the result time. So, just two minutes, and I would appreciate it. So... Again, thank you very much. There, I'm trying to make the stream here a little bit better because, like, I just got a sponsorship, so I'm like, I'm like on the verge of being decent, but like, it's hard for me, like, getting up there, but it's hard for me to play a lot because of uh, because I work 40 hours a week, so it's hard to fit some streams in there. I'd love to be able to stream every night, like that would be sweet, but I have a wife, and she probably would ditch me if I did that consistently. One second here. Um, I like this deck. I like it much more. I feel like I have more decisions to make than like just playing Mopey Teamer, which like, I, like Teamer is a fun deck to play in the fact that you're playing like you're doing cool things, you have cool effects, you have like a whole other resource to do, but I don't know. I'm going to make sure to tell my opponent that I'm dead for prizes. Make sure they don't concede. Um, yeah, this hand seems pretty good. So we'll keep this. Then I'll lead on the Bomat Courier. You like Chandra in the main? <laughs> My opponents had a tell me out. They had a rough draw. I like Chandra as a card. Like I always, I always really liked it out of Teamer. I felt like that whenever I played Teamer, it won. Like if I played it on turn four, it always won on the play. It always won the game. Or 
or if I played it like on turn three on Servant. Bonus tuning. So I think I'm going to play Kenra, even though I don't get a falter out of it. Or I can hold up Lightning Strike. I think I'm going to just play the Kenra. I think we're, we have so much removal that I think we can get on the front foot. And as long, and I don't want to hold up removal spells. I want to hold up removal spell next turn when my opponent can play a Whirler. So that's what they got, right? Okay, okay that Servant is dead. That was a pretty good draw. So let's go. I'm going to hit this and then get in with my creatures and hold up to strike a Whirler. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Hey. Sorry, I was, my phone was dead. I was playing the bed. I was a boy. But you're not feeling it. I was like, I was I'm on my last match, and I'm going to upload the video and kind of work. Nathan's watching, you want to say hi? Hi, Nathan. <coughs> Megan says hi, Nathan. Yeah, I'm just going to go upstairs with this, I think. Just use my mana, and then I'm also going to make it so... If he kills my Bowmat Courier, he kills my Bowmat Courier. God, that would have been nice to hit. So what am I worried about? My opponent didn't have a Whirler, or they would have played it. Meg Draft Time. I don't think it's Meg Draft Time. All right, I think I'm just going to lightning strike my opponent and then sack this. Look at this. And I get to make a land drop, but I don't get to play a land, unfortunately. That can let me play Soulscar Mage, which kind of sucks. But you're going to have to talk to Meg about the draft, Nilla. All right, Bristling Hydra is confirmed annoying. So I think I'm just going to play Kari Zev and play Kenra, and then next turn try to go wide enough where it would, and then using the Falter effect. Or I could play Soulscar Mage and then maybe have like a double Falter effect for my opponent. Don't make this awkward. Because I don't want to just I don't want to just jam damage here, but I do because if I draw a land and I can play Oncrop Crasher and Earthshaker Kenra next turn, then that seems really good. He would need two, four, five. I'd have six damage, seven damage, eleven damage coming at it, and it'd be from one, two, three, four, five, six different creatures. What do you mean, no? Because what can my opponent play? My opponent can play like two creatures, but we're going to be going so wide that, that I think I guess we can just play the Soul Scar Mage. Or play, I want to play the Kenra to just be mana efficient. Because then I can double spell next turn. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is right or not, but this is like being mana efficient. And then I'm just going to pass, untap, and then on crop crasher. 
as well and just have like multiple different bodies coming at our opponents. <laughs> he has settled. Nice. You wouldn't apply. I think playing the Kari Zev is really good because this has menace on its own. Opponent makes mana. Oh, you got a Whirler? Okay. So now they can make three Thopters. So now if we attack, they make three Thopters. This has Menace. Thopters chump here. This, we falter here. It's got four blockers. We have one, two, three, four, five attackers. Trades, trades, can't block this. Eats here, but then doesn't have the... So my opponent can only... my. So if I go on Crop Crasher... And exert on this. My opponent makes three Thopters. I have five attackers. Five X1 attackers. So theoretically, he could eat all of my X1s and eat my on crop crash or trade it with here. So then Kari Zev gets in. I do one damage. And then I play Soul Scar Mage. And I have Kari Zev and Soul Scar Mage versus Whirler. And then two cards in a hand. And then if we draw a land, we start eternalizing Kenras. So I think it's better to just play this on Crop Crasher. Because this means that either one of my X1s are going to get in. And I just want to push damage. I'm going to exert on this. I just want to end this game. Attack him, attack him, attack him. Attack him and exert. Because they can't, if you want to trade. Well, now I'm choosing between letting him pump the Hydra and letting him. Sam 117, thank you very much. Um, we're going to send this at him. The thing is, if he wants to go block, 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 block here, then the Hydras have to trade. The Hydra's trade with the Crasher in order for that to happen. Oh, I forgot to put that away. Yeah. It was the only one that was under seven dollars. <laughs> my wife is my wife is picking on my taste in champagne. See now he makes all these. And then we play Soul Scar Mage and our land next turn. Because he has to make three Thopters. Because if, if he doesn't block, he can go block here, block here, I guess block this pump, and then he goes to one. It's not barefoot. No, it is not. Because see, now he has to choose between either keeping his Hydra or going to one. And then if he goes to one and doesn't have two blockers, which he'll have two blockers, but that means both of them have to go on this Karizev. So yeah, this is definitely the best attack. And this Chandra can come down and minus, but then this Chandra has to hit this. This doesn't untap. And then we play Soul Scar Mage and we can start eternalizing. So what's his block? He probably goes... I can see him going here. This has to be blocked. So he probably blocks here, here, and maybe here. And then goes to one. Yeah, I don't really see. And then he minuses Chandra here. And then goes to one. So he has to kill his car he's at next turn. And then if we get a land, we're in good shape. Because then we're going to start eternalizing. And we get, we're drawing to like either one of our four, four shocks, three lightning strikes, or land. 
Just okay, rope refiner's good. He still has got to come down to this, right? He can't go up with this, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. So my opponent must have another removal spell or something. Or no, because they can they can make a work, they can make a thopter. Okay, so the Kenra chooses the Rogue Refiner. And then I just attack with the Kenra token. We're not block we're not attacking with this. With this thing. So I'm going to attack him. He makes a Thopter and Chumps. Then next turn I come back on this. And then I can attack with everything. Unless they add to the board. We're drawing to a lot of outs here. Just to like kill them on the spot. The, the Kenras are going to be. Probably good enough on their own. Because the next turn we hit this Rogue Refiner again. Or we hit this Bristling Hydra. Tight game. I do like playing this mono red deck. Like it, it I, I like playing this better than Teamer. It makes a lot of really interesting auto concedes. Okay. All right. Let's go to sideboard. I don't really know how to sideboard against Teamer. I probably want this because it hits Glorybringer, Chandra. I guess he's not going to have Chandra, so it hits Glorybringer and Whirler. I got to think these shocks probably aren't very good. I would assume that this is good. This is good. And I think these are good. This is the first time I've played this deck. All right. The on crop crashers probably aren't great. I don't know how to sideboard. <laughs> God, you're killing me. You know, if you get sassy with me, that's not the way to get Megan to draft. I'm just saying. Or it's going to make the price go up. One of the two. Um, I think I want these. I think the shocks for the Cubs is, is pretty narrow, right? Like that's only good on turn two if they haven't attuned. And I don't think the like I don't think I'm losing to the Cubs in this matchup. I think I lose to the Whirlers, and this doesn't kill the Whirlers. You want Pia? I can see Pia being okay, but where, what do I cut? I want to keep these in. I think I want my removal. I want to kill everything. I want to, I want anything that can kill like. Like I kind of like I can see bringing these in, but I don't know what to cut. Isn't the the Ferocidons are in the deck because they're the stones in this matchup? My friend told me. My friend told me the the Ferocidons are better than the like. That's why we put played four of them. I can see this maybe not being as good. On the draw, maybe it's borrowed in the play. I'm gonna we're gonna go with this. Well, P is not necessarily a two for one, right? Like it's two creatures, but like if they if they have like a I mean I I don't I don't know maybe, maybe but like I don't know it doesn't seem like Ferocidon's the cut you know like we decided to play four Ferocidon's because it was the stones here it doesn't feel like if, if we brought Ferocidon's in purely for this matchup it doesn't seem like we should board them out. 
when we play it. All right, we're gonna get at least a hit in with our career. Oh no 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 no! Oh man, now we're gonna lose because we we motoed. I had my hand on the wrong button. Oh, my opponent didn't have a play. Okay. Well, if we win this game on the draw after F6ing through our first turn, it's going to be impressive. What does my opponent got? Why don't they just do this now? To save themselves a point of damage. Here comes a Whirler. Nope. Okay. I'm going to get this Mentor down before the Whirler gets in play. I guess my opponent's telegraphing a removal spell. And I would assume that the Kari Zev is worse than the Mentor. So if I'm going to have one Eva <coughs> Harness Lighting, I'd rather it be this. Wow, they don't have anything. Okay, here comes Big Daddy Hydra. So I can still get in for one. God, I've had about enough of this, this Kari Zev here. So get in for one. Play a mountain and then play another harsh mentor or play a harsh mentor. And now my opponent's gonna like make his decision now. All right. Hopefully we don't get glory bringered out of this game. Which looks like just oh they vizier what are they vizier oh they're vizier this okay this hydra is gonna beat me down if I put five power in front of this four. Lightning four, he has to animate, animate, but then he can get out of it again. I don't think it's time to block yet. So I'm gonna attack with just this. Play a soul scar mage and pass. These hydras are gonna be a big issue. But at least this thing is going to play a part in uh kind of mitigating the pumps a little bit. Okay, so I'm probably going to just lightning strike this glory bringer. Just to kind of make it just a 1-1 one -one flyer. Oh, this is going to be bad. So he's going there. Because then he pumps... Yeah, I mean, I'm just dead. Yeah, make it a 1-1. One, one. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. But my opponents can pump this to do 8. They can do 11 damage if they want. I mean, I'm not going to block, but I don't, I don't see myself getting through this rough spot. I guess we're going in with this Bowmat Courier, and these two are on chump duty. This whole scar mage is sweet. I was like skeptical of this card. A tune. So now both of these are lethal. So if you got a removal spell, it's game over. No, nope. so the servant, it's glory bringers. I'm tapping next turn, which is a problem as well. Oh, 
that would have been a good play. That would have been a good play, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that one there. They're giving us more points. I mean, I don't think ultimately it probably... I'm going to sack this now so I got the mana for next turn. These cards aren't going to win us the game. Okay, we got a lightning strike. Yep. Sacking there, like, probably sucks, but, I mean, the cards in our hand are going to do it. There's probably not a combination of cards in our deck that do it, but we might as well dig for it. I forgot the, how you can basically make Kari Zev, like... The singing, singing, uh, singing was good. My wife did really well. I want to bring these Soul Scar Mages back in. Because the Soul Scar Mage is kind of sweet. I guess this card, I guess all my cards are better on the play. So I guess I'll just run it back. Yeah, my wife, my wife and uh, her sister both played, both sang a duet, and they both were pretty fantastic. So I took this deck. This was uh, the list that Shouta played, except he had four Crashers and two. Ferocidons and two of the other guys in the main deck. Oh, we're going to ship this. All right, I'll keep this. Probably a lamp. I'll put a lamp on top. I think his hand's pretty good. Like for a six hand card hand. Oh, the land's under here. Oh, no. Huh. I guess I should have played the Soul Scar Mage and then had the land. Yeah, that makes sense. Those are the little things you don't see until you play with them. I mean, we hit a land, but it would have been nice to get that other one. So get this in here. It is funny how, like, once you start working with a deck, you begin to learn the little things about it, like how it works, um, like the little ins and outs. I think I'm just going to play Kenra, even though I don't get anything out of the Falter. My opponent wants to play a Whirler next turn. And that's all right. Is this a Counterspell? Okay. My opponent's only going to get one Thopter out of the Whirler. So hopefully we hit a land, too. Like, that would be nice. We're just building up this Bowmat. This Bowmat feels like it's going to give us some serious inevitability. Here's the Whirler. Yep. So I'll just Lightning Strike this. If we draw land, I'll plus and then, nope. So I could play Pia. That doesn't seem quite as good. We're just gonna get this off the table. If he blocks his Bowmat Courier, the question is, am I willing to trade in these two cards, good cards here, for random four? And I think I am. Yeah, I think I'm willing to trade in these for a random set here. We want more lands. So even if we draw like a land to get in there, it's still good. Okay, it's so like next turn we're going to be able to get a Hazard down. Well, I guess we, we can get a Hazard down next turn. It's going to be pretty unlikely we, we get to attack unless we play a Shock. But I think we boarded our Shocks out. Yeah, we did board the Shocks out. So if I draw a spell, 
I'll probably play that so we can play Kari's Ev as well. Maybe I'll just play Kari's Ev anyways. There's another Whirler, okay. My opponent's getting, I guess it's alright to get feisty and attack there. So if I attack, falter this, they make a Thopter. I guess it's alright to do this because then I can internalize it. And I also like clear Thopters out of the way for the uh, for the whatever it is, the Hazard. Like he's just gonna lose jump blockers. So even though I'm basically just trading the Surfshaker Kenra for three energy, I hope that on the backswing it's going to be good. And it allows my Soul Scar Mage to get in. And it means that Hazard's active next turn, and we can attack with this Kari Zev. So it is kind of a crap trade, but I think I think it's worth it. The best draw we have, I think I just want to draw another land. Within the next two draws or so. Okay, so they have Braid Cars have. Okay, well, this means we're going to get another attack in with Hazret. Or he's going to get more damage in. Alright, Ferocidon's good. We'll play that next turn if it doesn't work out. But we want get to our, get our homeboy in there. Hopefully he doesn't coo us. Our opponent missed the land drop. So they probably have some good spells in the hand. They might have a coup. In which coup would be pretty annoying. This is getting murdered. Okay. Gives my opponent no more energy. So they make a Thopter. They actually, I guess you get four energy from Confiscation Coup, so you can take a four drop with it without having anything. So you got a Hydra. Okay. Play this first. My opponent's going to make some dudes. And I still think I attack with this Hazret. Because again, we're just kind of like putting... Our opponent's basically in the Abyss from this. And then if we draw a land next turn, we're in really good shape. So let's hope they don't have a coup. A glory bringer would be bad too. I feel like as long as we keep this hazard in play, we've got a chance. Like this card just seems very powerful. So the like glory bringer, the way our opponent's tapping. So they probably exert here. I'm probably going to chump. Well, I don't know. We'll see how my opponent attacks. This is coming in too. So I'm taking eight. Going to six. No, my opponent's... So I go to six. This exerts... This isn't really attacking very well either, so I think I'm just going to save myself four life points. Yeah, that sucks. So I attack. He goes to five. Attacks. He can crack me back for four, six. So if I attack and my opponent has a glory bringer, I'm dead. They've been sitting on five drops their whole hand, the whole game. But the longer this game goes, the worse it seems to get for me. Swing has, play has.
swinging with Hazret and playing with Hazret ki- kind of seems mopey because if I keep the Hazret in my hand, I can attack and go. If my opponent plays another Glory Bringer, then I die. I guess I should wait and see what attacks. If my opponent doesn't do anything to block. Playing Hazret and ditching Hazret, or pl- attacking and ditching Hazret seems kind of mopey when I can force them to be on a two turn clock. This way. Well, no matter what I'm attacking, so let's start there. Let's see what our opponent does. They make a Thopter. So now that they block to save the life, I'm going to play the Hazard. Like, if they would have just taken the damage there, I might have thought about um, keeping the hazard in play. But the fact that they took it, it probably means that they've got... What is this? It's a Rogue Refiner. Yeah, I don't really see... This game's going to be a tough one to win. Because, like, this is a problem. This is a problem. That's pretty good. Okay, so I glory bring her this. Probably hit here. Or probably hit this. Block here. Take four, six, seven. Four, six, seven, eight. I think I've got to hit this. Block this. So that's what we're going to do to start with. And then maybe if I get this Earthshanker Kenra online next turn. But I, just, I don't think I can beat multiple chump blockers from my opponent. Wait, hold on a second. Five, this is four, six. No, then I'm dead on board. So I have to hit, I have to hit this. And then I block here. And then I need a block here next turn or this. So I need to, I need to kill this Hydra. Block this, they take, and then take nine. I need to basically block the two things that can grow. So, I need to block or kill the two things that can grow. So, we're going to lightning strike. We're actually, so we're going to go here with this because he can't pump this right now. And this is more energy inefficient to pump. So, I'm going to kill this long tusk cub and then look to block this next turn. Take. Two, well, actually, no, well, this glory bringer's untapping. So I take two. Yeah, so I need to find an answer to this glory bringer, anyways. We're in a lot of trouble regardless. But I think my best play is to hit this long tusk cub because it's the most efficient use of my opponent's energy. Like this hydra is inefficient. And then if my opponent goes two nuts with an attack and I draw a land, I might be able to get get through this. My opponent has a coup that I'm dead. But, alas. Looks like what this is going to be. Just a Hydra. Okay. Now we're probably just dead. Attack. So if I attack, they chump. Play this. Then block here. Take two, four, six. All right, we are dead. All right, everybody. I really appreciate you guys uh, coming and watching today. Um... If you guys have the time before you leave and can fill out that survey, that would be great, and I would appreciate it. I think I'm going to practice this mono red deck more. I think I like, I think I like this deck more. I like playing this deck more than I like playing Teamer or something like that. What I've got to, what I've got to work on is I don't really know how to sideboard with it, and I got to work on knowing when to be aggressive with 
my uh, dumping cards out of my hand versus getting value. I think I want more odd crop crashers somewhere in here, but we'll worry about that for next time. Let me find someone to uh, send you guys over to. I don't know. Definitely if anybody, like, with how they would change this deck. One thing that I don't know what to do here is I don't know when to bring in the... Uh, I don't know, like, what the Pias are necessarily doing. So, let me go send you over here. I hope you guys like Legacy. Backslash host. S-T-R-Y, S-T-R-Y-F-R-O. Oh, gosh. What is his hand? Backslash host, S-T-R-Y-F-O. S-T-Y-R-F-O. Is that it? S T. All right. Sounds good, everybody. I hope everyone has a good rest of their day. And I hope uh, if you have the time to fill out that survey. Thank you very much. And have a good weekend. All right. All right.